Hello dear and welcome to your yin yoga practice. The sequence has been specifically designed for you to connect to the element of earth, to feel more grounded, resilient and strong. Yin yoga is a gentle practice where poses are held for at least three minutes at a time in order to stimulate not only your deep connective tissue called fascia but also your energy channels they are called nadis in yoga and meridians in the traditional chinese medicine the point of the practice is to allow qi or life force energy to flow freely through those channels as well as to find relaxation and a deep meditative state this is why sometimes we will use props like blocks, bolsters, straps and blankets to support us in yin yoga. For today, if you have any props in your disposal, please bring them close to yourself so that you don't have to look for them later in the class. Make sure to have at least a blanket, especially if your knees are sensitive, and a block or a dictionary sized book that we will use for some postures. It's also nice to light a candle and turn on some soothing music. Feel free to pause the video to prepare your space and I will meet you on the mat. All right, let's begin in a seated butterfly pose, Baddha Konasana. Sit comfortably, maybe on the edge of a folded blanket or cushion. Lengthen your spine, chest aligned with your hips, and bring the soles of your feet together. Your feet can be close or far away from your hips. You can rest your hands either on your feet, on your shins, or behind your sitting bones on the floor for support. If this is not a comfortable asana to start with, and we will be staying here for the next five minutes, then you can find a cross-legged position of your choice or even rest your back against a wall. Remember, it's your practice and I want you to feel as comfortable as possible. When you're ready, gently close your eyes. Allow yourself to relax more and more with each breath, starting from now. Soften the muscles of your face, soften the muscles of your arms and legs. Allow yourself to slow down. Feel the ground underneath your sitting bones, underneath your feet and legs. Feel the presence of your body. Feel its structure, its muscles, its bones. Feel the gravity pulling you down, anchoring you on the earth and feel the pressure that the atmosphere is exerting on your chest, head, arms and legs. Keep breathing normally and noticing every inhale and every exhale of yours. In your body, the earth element is manifested through everything that is solid your bones, muscles, blood, your connective tissue. And when the earth channel, also called Pritivi in Sanskrit, is unbalanced, we can feel worried, anxious, moody, forgetful, disconnected, dazed, and even disoriented. Whereas when the Pritivi channel is flowing, we feel rooted, secure, stable, safe, grounded, confident, resilient and strong. We feel connected to the center of ourselves 
and to the center of all things. The earth element is associated with the first chakra, which is the base and the foundation of all the other chakras. The first chakra is called Muladhara. It sits at the base of your spine and expresses through this beautiful, radiant, red colored light. So let's visualize this wheel of energy at the base of our spine. Feel its warmth, its energy, its presence. Feel how it's anchoring you down. Simply imagine a ball of red light at the base of your spine and keep breathing normally. Now let's visualize the Prithivi channel or the earth channel in your body. Keep your eyes closed and just picture it, imagine it. So the earth channel runs from the ball of your foot through your heels, up the back of your legs, through your sitting bones, along your spine and over the top of your skull to the roof of your mouth. Follow its path just with your imagination and visualize this river of energy flowing through this energetic channel. Now, before we move on, I would like to introduce to you Kumbhaka Pranayama. Kumbhaka translates as breath retention. It is a sacred pranayama practice that will allow us to breathe less in order to bring more vitality to our lungs, brain, and overall longevity. In our case, we will take about three breaths per minute. We will inhale for five counts, hold the breath for 10, and exhale for five. This breath retention will allow us to calm the nervous system, reduce stress, and open the bronchial tubes in the lungs thus improving breathing and just bringing more oxygen to your blood cells, your body cells, and will give you more energy as well at the end of the practice. If this breath is uncomfortable or you have never practiced pranayama or yin before, then stick to your normal breathing pattern in and out through the nose. No need to control it or force it, just remember to breathe. So the Kumbhaka is just a bonus for those of you that have been practicing for a long time and just want to bring something more to the practice. Let's begin by activating the Kumbhaka breath. If you need to shift a little bit in your posture, you can. And for those of you that are ready, maybe you can take a long breath and lengthen your spine and then fold forward over your legs in butterfly pose. So if you were in cross-legged position, you can come to your butterfly or stay in your cross-legged position. If you were sitting up in butterfly, you can simply fold forward and maybe relax your chest on top of a bolster or a block or bring a block under your forehead. Let's inhale for five counts. Hold the breath for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and exhale for 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Inhale for 5, 4, 3, two, one, hold for 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Exhale for five, four, three, two, 
one and you can go on like this by yourself i will remind you to breathe with kumbhaka throughout the practice otherwise just keep breathing normally in and out through the nose let's slowly slowly if your eyes are closed open the eyes and come back with a long spine let's come to our dragonfly pose from where you are, simply open your legs as wide as you want to and make sure that your knees and toes are pointing up towards the sky. Imagine your pelvis is like a ball that you want to tilt forward to spill the water forward. So we are going to inhale and lengthen the spine and exhale, rotate at the hips to fold forward. Once you're there, you can prop yourself up with pillows and blankets and blocks and books under your belly, chest and maybe forehead. If you only have a block, you can bring it under your forehead and relax your arms on the floor. Keep breathing and if you want to start your Kumbhaka breath, you can start now inhaling for five, holding your breath for 10 and exhaling for five. The poses that we will be doing in this sequence are also going to be stimulating our spleen and stomach meridians. In the traditional Chinese medicine, all of the organ systems are discussed in terms of yin and yang pairings. So they go by two and there's always a yin organ and a yang organ. The yin organs are solid or full, while the yang organs are hollow or empty. Usually the yin organs stock the energy, whereas the yang organs transform the energy. And in our case, the stomach is our yang organ and the spleen is our yin organ. The stomach is here to transform the energy, transform the foods that we eat, while the spleen is here to recognize old or damaged red blood cells and remove them from our body. But it also saves any useful components such as iron and the process of doing so. We'll just stay here for a couple of breaths more and move on into our next pose. Keep releasing any tension, maybe you can go a little bit further, relax a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Maybe you're holding some tension in the soles of your feet or in the palms of your hands. Maybe you can flip your palms upwards towards the sky and soften your upper body even more towards the floor. Mm -hmm. Enjoy the feeling. Feel the weight of your upper body taking you closer and closer to the earth. Now let's take our last breath in and a long exhale out through the mouth. Beautiful, let's press our arms and hands into the floor and slowly, slowly come back into an upright position. Bend your knees and slowly bring your legs together and transition into your tabletop pose. So on your hands and on your knees facing the front of your mat. Usually in a yin yoga class, I would say don't pay too much attention to your alignment in cat cow and tabletop. But because the earth is all about alignment and structure, I want you to bring your hands right under your shoulders. Take your fingertips wide and press your hands away. Arms are straight or almost straight and the elbows are pointing backwards. The knees are hip width apart and you can tuck or untuck your toes. It's up to you, but make sure that you're in a nice structure that you feel stable let's take a few rounds of cat cow on your inhale arch your back look forward allow your chest to open 
maybe your gaze can go upwards towards the sky as well and on the exhale round your back push the floor away nice just like a cat inhale arch nice open enjoy after all these forward folds we deserve a little bit of movement for our spine exhale round the back again inhale open and arch shoulder blades maybe together and exhale shoulder blades apart round and open the back of your heart one last time inhale arch and exhale round beautiful come to neutral spine and walk your hands forward keeping your hips right above your knees into a puppy stretch we will stay in puppy stretch for three minutes for puppy stretch you can bring your forehead on top of a block or maybe your chest on top of a block or a pillow if not you can either bring your chin on the floor or you can bring your forehead down on the floor the forehead on the floor is a little bit less intense for the shoulders so just stay mindful and of course during those three minutes you might want to go a little bit further or back out slightly keep your hands on the floor you can relax your arms the most important part here is to keep your palms down and your hips right above the knees usually we tend to lean forward too much or bring the hips too much backwards so just find a place where you can feel the stretch your heart open and just notice how your breath changed from the previous postures we're coming into a counter pose where we're opening the heart as opposed to folding forward if you practice kumbhaka go ahead and start your kumbhaka breaths inhaling for five holding for ten and exhaling for five enjoy allow your heart to melt down maybe picture your heart being like a precious stone that is sinking down towards the center of the earth and your butt like a balloon going up and lengthening your spine wonderful keep breathing one minute left let's take our last breath here wherever you are take a deep breath in and let it all out through your mouth softening your whole body gently press your hands into the floor and bring yourself back into your tabletop beautiful now let's take a big step forward with your right foot and place it on the outside of your right hand coming into our dragon our dragon is also called lizard in the other yoga styles so both of your hands are on the inside of your right foot and you can slightly turn your foot out towards the right make sure that your knee stays on top of your ankle or behind your ankle so that you have some space to sink your hips down and here if your left knee is sensitive you can bring your folded blanket under the knee or you can fold your mat we will spend here the next three minutes keep breathing feel free to come down on your forearms and maybe stack your fists one on top of the other relaxing your forehead down either on your fists or on a block if it's too low you can also bring your forearms on a block or a few books if not stay on your hands and for those of you that are really open in the hip you can let your right knee open to the side and come on the knife edge of the right foot beautiful keep breathing 
we are opening here the hip you might feel some sensations in your left thigh as well wherever you feel the tension or the stretch or any kind of sensation allow your breath to go there and for those of you practicing kumbhaka don't forget to breathe with kumbhaka throughout each pose so the kumbhaka breath the breath retention is used only when you're in the pose it's better to breathe normally when we're transitioning from one asana to another and when we're doing more dynamic movements one more minute here enjoy breathe allow your hips to become heavy sink lower towards the floor take in all this deliciousness from this beautiful practice from your beautiful space your beautiful breath and your beautiful body Let's take our last deep breath in all together. Deep breath in. And a long exhale out through the mouth, softening a little bit more, releasing any tension that is left. Slowly come back on your hands if you're not there already and on your foot. We will slowly transition from here into our sleeping swan, also known as pigeon pose. Let's heel toe our foot to the left and to the back a little bit, bringing our right knee down on the floor. So just on the outside of your right wrist, make sure that your right knee is not aligned with your hip, but it's a little bit more to the right so that you don't um, fall on the right or on the left side. You can prop your right hip with a block or a pillow or you can keep it hanging if it's comfortable for you. Make sure that your left leg is as lengthened as possible towards the back and that your toes are pointing straight backwards. Inhale here, support yourself with your hands, lengthen your back. And on the exhale, take the space that you created and fold forward on your forearms, maybe forehead rests on a block maybe forehead rests on the back of your hands or on the floor you can also lengthen your arms forward and allow your chest to rest on the floor make sure that you don't go too deep don't give a hundred percent of your physical ability to come into the pose 70 to 80 percent of your flexibility and effort is perfect for this practice so that we don't overstretch or strain our body. We will be staying for three minutes in our sleeping swan. Keep listening to your body, to your breath. Maybe using kumbhaka to soften and relax even more. You're doing great. I know it can be a little bit intense, especially when working with the hips. So allow yourself to feel, to breathe.
Allow your thoughts to come and go. Try not to cling to them or push them away. Allow them to come. Stay for a little while and then go away. Attachment is both positive and negative when we're pushing something away or running away from something, it's also attachment. So try not to punish yourself for thinking thoughts. We are all thinking a multitude of thoughts every day and it only makes us more human. And every single time a thought comes, whether positive or negative, especially in this deep meditative state, in yin, in shavasana, in meditation practice, it's only an opportunity for us to practice mindfulness, really. Every single thought is a new chance to come back to the present moment and it's truly a gift. It's beautiful that we are able to do that. Let's take our last deep breath in. Stay exactly where you are. And a very long exhale out through your mouth. Softening, maybe going a little bit further before pressing your hands into the floor and coming back up. You can bring your left leg a little bit closer and then tuck your toes under and press the floor away to come to your downward facing dog. Feet are hip width apart, both hands are on the floor. Try to lengthen your spine and relax the weight of your head, gazing straight between your feet. Allow yourself to walk your dog here, paddle your feet, bending one knee and then the other, stretching the back of your leg. Just a little counter pose for all those hip openers. Any movement is welcome here if you need to do some spinal movement, some spinal waves going back and forth. A few breaths out through the mouth. Allow yourself to take them. And we are slowly going to transition into our dragon on the other side. So look between your hands and maybe on the left of your left hand where you're going to step your left foot. And you don't have to do a big step. It's not about having a strong core or strong psoas in this practice, you can step your foot halfway and then grab your foot with your hand and then put it right where you need it to be. Make sure that your knee is not going more forward than your ankle and turn your left toes slightly out. Allow your right knee to gently come down to the floor, maybe on the blanket and your hips to sink down towards the floor. If you want to bring your forearms on a block or on the floor, feel free to do it now. Pick your variation and commit to it. Allow yourself to spend those three minutes in your variation, in your pose, in your stretch, in your mind. while staying really mindful of what's going on. Don't check out. If you ever find yourself thinking about the future or the past, just come back to this present moment. We often start to think about what we're going to do later that day, what we're gonna have for lunch, for dinner. So just come back to this present moment every time. Withdrawal of the senses. We are here and now. And this is all that matters in this moment. 
enjoy your dragon flying low or winged dragon whatever is the variation that you chose and breathe don't forget to use kumbaka if you have been doing that since the beginning of the practice otherwise keep breathing and enjoy full belly breaths enjoy the stillness enjoy the surrender we are halfway through beautiful let's take our last breath in now last breath out uh, hips are heavy and then pressing the floor away with your hands and arms and slowly transitioning into our sleeping swan bring the left foot a little bit backwards and then to the right bringing the left knee where the foot was more or less finding your comfortable pigeon pose lengthening the right leg as far back as you can and make sure that your right ankle isn't twisted bring yourself on your fingertips to lengthen your back and on the exhale fold forward and find your sleeping swan enjoy the hip opener enjoy the sensations and breathe through them find your comfortable position again use your props pillows blocks books under your upper body under your head especially it feels really nice to drop the head forehead down You can start the kumbaka if you want to. Can you soften a little bit more? Can you surrender a little bit more to this pose? This is the magic of yin when we surrender and stop forcing the posture. We find ourselves going further, maybe not necessary physically, but we feel more space. We feel more grounded we feel better because when we're holding on to something too tight and it hurts too much it probably means that we need to let it go we need to soften the grip and surrender to what is and in this pose 
you have all the sensations in your hip, in your thigh, maybe in your back, maybe in your arms and shoulders if you lengthen your arms on the floor. A lot of sensations. This is not a natural position to stay in for minutes at a time. And the only thing that we can truly do is nothing. Allow yourself to be nothing, do nothing, and just enjoy what is. You don't need to show any flexibility achievements to anyone. You don't need to go super deep because once again, it's not a flexibility class. And the only thing that you can do here is feel good. Just enjoy this, enjoy this sensation, and let's take our last breath in. Fill up your lungs all the way to the top, and then a long exhale out through the mouth, releasing any tension. <sighs> Beautiful. Press back up. Take your time, slow motion movement delicious like through thick honey or salt water really slow movements don't rush and find your downward facing dog find your own way beautiful stretch it out if you prefer to come to a child's pose for a moment, you can do that now as well. Otherwise, find some delicious movements in your downward facing dog before we move on to our next asana. Perfect. All right, our next asana is a toe stretch. And this might be the most intense posture of the practice for a lot of us. So we are going to slowly, slowly bring our knees to the floor and sit in our hero pose, Virasana. Curl all 10 toes under. Make sure that even your pinky is on the floor so you can help with your hand. And you can stay here, resting your hands on your lap. Or if it's too intense for you, you can bring a little bit of weight in your hands in front of you. A little bit tabletop style, but still a lot of weight in your toes. And we are going to stay here for two minutes. Try to breathe through it and not move too much. Just enjoy and feel the sensation, even if it's too intense. The reason why we're stretching this part of the body is because the earth channel is going right through the ball of our foot, the heel, and also because we are not working enough on our plantar fascia, which is the fascia that is in the sole of your foot. This fascia is connected to the back of your leg. So if you find yourself maybe stuck in your hamstring stretches or your hamstrings are really tight, you might want to consider stretching the toes and your plantar fascia a little bit more often because this is going to activate the back of your leg. The fascia is interconnected. It's this web of energy that links our muscles to our skin, to our bones, and it's also a big part of our muscles themselves. And it's all one from your toes all the way up to the crown of your head. It's in your face, it's in your fingers, it's in your legs and arms, and even around your organs. 30 more seconds, keep breathing. Soften a little bit more. Where are you holding most tension? Go there and breathe into that space. Unclench your jaw, soften your forehead. And let's take our last breath in. A long exhale. And we are going to bring the weight in our hands, untuck the toes and come to a quick 
child's pose for stretching. If you want to tap the tops of your feet on the ground in order to release the energy that have been accumulating in this area, you can. And we are going to transition in our dangling pose. So bring the feet on the floor and straighten your legs, keeping a micro bend in your knees. Feet are hip width apart or about two fists apart. You can measure by bringing your two fists between your feet. Make sure that all ten toes are pointing forward and then you can release the weight of your upper body, of your head. Relax your arms on the floor or you can even grab your opposite elbows with your hands. And we are going to stay here for two minutes. So um, this is also quite intense, especially if you're not used to being upside down a lot. So if you feel like you're lightheaded, you can always come back down to your hero pose and just sit on your shins and allow the blood to come down. Otherwise, you might feel some tingling sensations in your legs. This is totally normal. We are stretching the back line of the leg and we're also blocking the blood flow a little bit because we're going upside down, it's a little bit hard for the body to pump the blood up the torso and then back towards the legs, so this is why you might feel the tingling sensation. But as soon as we will come out of the pose, new, fresh, oxygenated blood will flow into the legs again. So just keep breathing. Kumbaka can also work here. We have 30 more seconds here, so just relax. Hang in there, <laughs> breathe. And we are going to take our last breath. and slowly bring your hands to the floor lift your gaze and open your toes out maybe as wide as the mat and come into your malasana or squat pose sinking your hips slow you also have the option to bring your hips on a block and sit and relax there lifting your chest and maybe bringing your hands in prayer pose in front of the heart opening the knees with your elbows or you can hang in there with your hips above the ground and if you want to make it even more yin and relaxing you can relax your arms in front of you round your back and relax the weight of your head down but if you feel like it's a little bit too much to bring the head down, just keep lifting it up and lengthening your spine, opening your heart. It's really up to you. We are staying here for just three quick minutes to counter pose after our dangling. And then after that, we will do one more minute of dangling and then two minutes in Malasana again. This is a great exercise to connect to the earth. Maybe you can feel the pelvic floor here as well. Lifting slightly up. This is your Mula Bandha, your energetic lock that can sometimes be stimulated by lifting the pelvic floor, but it's an energetic lock on itself and it's working throughout our postures, throughout our pranayama practice. If you practice kumbhaka, you can do it now.
Let's take our last breath in. And a long exhale. Softening. And then bring your feet hip width apart, parallel to each other and straight in your legs. Maybe keeping a micro bend in your knees. Lengthening the spine in your dangling one minute in this pose. Enjoy. Enjoy the inversion. Enjoy the counter pose. Experiment with your weight coming forward and backwards, maybe, and then left to right and right to left until you find stillness and a sweet spot. Beautiful last breath in. And then a long, long, long exhale out through the mouth. <sighs> Transitioning into Malasana for two minutes. Open your toes out, sit low on a block or not. Hands in front of your heart center, long back or rounded back. Weight of your head relaxed forward as well as your arms. You can even turn your palms upwards towards the sky. A few breaths here. Beautiful. Take your last breath in. Long exhale out through your mouth. And very slowly. Shift your weight forward and come down on your knees. Back in Virasana, hero pose, knees together. We have two more poses before Shavasana. The next posture is called deer pose. From where you are, we are going to face the long side of your mat, still in Virasana. Lift your hips and shift them to the right, coming all the way off your heels. Lean even more to the right to open the legs and connect the sole of your right foot with the top of your left leg. The left foot comes all the way back connecting maybe your glute if you can or you can leave it separated so you're faced with a triangular shape with your body here we are going to inhale also come on the fingertips and then twist to the right and fold forward either over the right knee or completely off the right leg if you're flexible enough to twist so much 
and you can also come on top of a bolster or a pillow or place a block maybe under your forehead here it's a little bit hard to find but as long as you feel grounded in your right hip and you feel a little stretch maybe even in your thigh and it's also a twist at the same time and perfect as a counter pose for pigeon pose so just allow yourself to have a long back maybe you want to stay on your hands maybe you want to come on your forearms and just soften and relax there breathing normally and just soften and relax into the pose and maybe using kumbaka breath or your normal breathing we will be staying here for three minutes If you're still holding on to something, if you're still creating tension, allow yourself to let it all go with the next exhale. Allow yourself to go with the flow of the posture, of the breath, of the moment. You're doing great. Beautiful. Take your last breath in. A long exhale out through the mouth, maybe going a little bit deeper and keep your back long. And then press your forearms into the floor. Lift yourself up. And then we are going to counter twist, looking to the left and bringing the right hand on the other left knee. Just a quick twist to release from the pose on twist and you can either lean back and bring your legs all the way to the other side or you can come back to your hero pose and then shift your hips to the left and bring the sole of your left foot on top of your right thigh toes touching the knee and then the right sole of the foot maybe touching your glute let's take a breath in first fingertips on the floor lengthen your spine and then on the exhale twist to the left and fold forward over bolster cushion a block make yourself comfortable maybe release your forehead on top of something keep breathing and use your kumbaka breath if you want to i remind you that the kumbaka breath is Inhaling for five seconds or five counts, holding the breath for ten and exhaling for five. Without any tension in your jaw, belly, chest, very soft breath in order to relax. So if you felt like 
the breathing was creating more tension than usually. Maybe take some natural, normal breaths from now on. Wonderful. We're halfway through. Relax and soften your hips, your quadriceps, your legs, the soles of your feet, your shoulders. You don't need to engage any muscle. Just allow your whole body to be become heavier and heavier with each exhale more and more grounded Slowly prepare to exit the pose. Take a deep and long breath in. And a long exhale out through the mouth. <sighs> Letting it all go. Slowly press your forearms into the floor. Lift yourself up. And then bring your left hand on the outside of your right knee and twist to the right. Maybe looking over your right shoulder with a long, long spine. Wonderful. Slowly untwist and find your way lying down on your back. We are going to take our last back bend of the practice. So prepare a block just near your hips and once you're lying down on your back Bend your knees and bring the feet on the floor about hip-width apart. We are coming into supported bridge pose. Grab a block or a dictionary size book. If you have a block then you have more options and you can try different heights. You can also experiment with a hard bolster or a hard pillow if you don't have a dictionary or a block. Slowly lift your hips and then place your block right under your sacrum. Sacrum bone is right above your coccyx or your tailbone at the base of your spine. And once you release your hips down on the block, you're supposed to feel comfortable, like you're lying on something flat. Try changing the position if you feel any pinching or discomfort, just readjusting the placement of the block and always start with the lowest setting to support you. Once you found a comfortable position, relax your whole weight into the block. And as an option, you can lengthen your legs out in front of you and relax your whole body, creating this little bridge with your body. Beautiful. You can close your eyes, enjoy, enjoy some deeper breaths. When the chest is open, the breaths become naturally deeper, more effortless. The lungs have more space and take up more space in the heart opening position. So just enjoy it. Breathe normally in and out through your nose. If you were practicing Kumbhaka throughout the practice, now is a time for you to come back to natural, soft, effortless breaths in and out through your nose. Slowly preparing our nervous system for deep rest in Shavasana.
Take your last breaths in your supported bridge pose. And if your legs are straight, you can bend the knees and stamp your feet into the floor, gently lifting your hips just enough to remove the prop. Set it aside and slowly, one vertebra at a time, lower your hips all the way down. You can sway your knees from side to side if you want to. And maybe giving your knees a hug, bringing them into the chest. And finding your Shavasana. Legs are long, you can bring a pillow under your knees to have a little bit more ease in your lower back. Take up all the space that you need physically, but also energetically. Take your arms out, let your feet fall open to the sides. Your hips are heavy, relaxed on the floor. The back of your head is also really grounded into the mat. You're sinking into the earth like on a cloud or in grass or on a sandy beach. Your breath becomes more natural and your eyes are closed. Shavasana.
Please stay in your Shavasana for as long as your body requires to. If you are ready to come out of your Shavasana, start deepening your breaths, moving your fingers and your toes. And then give yourself a big stretch, reaching your arms over your head. And bring your knees into your chest, roll over to your right side. And pose there for a second. Keep your eyes closed and press your arms into the floor and come back into a simple sitting position. Hands in prayer in front of your heart center. Lengthen your spine and bring your chin slightly closer to your chest. Let's express gratitude for this practice and for ourselves for showing up and giving love to our body, mind and soul. Thank you so much. May this practice benefit all, including ourselves. Have a beautiful evening and night.